Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. According to the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation, about 55% of properties in the state have their own wastewater treatment system, commonly known as a septic system. These systems can be found in rural areas where there's no access to municipal septic or water. They're also used along waterways in the state and in lakeside communities and neighborhoods where aging septic systems can be a real problem for water quality. Rebecca Gollin and video editor Marco Ayala tell us how some homeowners are tackling the wastewater issue on one of Vermont's most problematic lakes. It's a field of dreams sort of thing. Build it and they will come. It's not everyone's idea of a field of dreams, but for septic and wastewater technician Jared Willey, this innovative septic system on the shores of Lake Carmi in Franklin has a lot going for it. So we provide a home for aerobic bacteria and we provide the uh, necessary environment for them to thrive and they do all the work for us. This is an Advantech system. It's one of the approved, innovative, alternative septic technologies in Vermont. It's a recirculating system, so effluent that exits the septic tank is held and recirculated over the top of the filter. Uh, it feeds the bacteria that live inside the textile. The bacteria do the work of the treatment, and then there uh, is clean water coming out of the other side going to a soil absorption system, in this case a bottomless sand filter. This system was installed about a year ago. The traditional septic that was in place before it was not failing according to the standards set by the state, but the homeowner reached a point where he needed to upgrade. Well, when we bought the camp in 06, we had a 2,000 gallon holding tank, which basically when it was full, you had to empty. So it was okay for a few years and then it went to where we were spending more time at the lake. It got to be an inconvenience where we were having to get it pumped every, you know, maybe three, four times a year. So we decided to put in a, you know, a, a good system that would be, you know, environmentally friendly to the lake. Randy Farrar and his family decided to go with an alternative system, and after weighing their options, this Advantex was the best fit for their property. The waste moves through the tank, eventually draining the treated water that's the end product to the large sand pit out front. The entire unit has an internet-based telemetry system, which means that the maintenance operator, in this case, Willie, can log in remotely to check on the conditions. For instance, if there's a high level alarm or if there's a leaking toilet or some other condition uh, that would uh, require maintenance, it allows us to, in most cases, only visit the site once a year. So it's kind of our eyes and ears on the site. Uh, we think about these systems uh, like miniature wastewater treatment plants because really they are. While maintenance is important for all septic systems, it's also a requirement by the state. In 2007, the Department of Environmental Conservation took over permitting septic systems. Before that, those permits were issued by individual towns, so there were different standards around the state. What happened in 2007, all systems were grandfathered in. So you may have a system that doesn't have a permit, and that's, that's fine, but if you add a bedroom, or that system fails, then you will be required to get a permit. Or if you change your land use, if you, the, the use of your property, or if you convert from a seasonal property around a lakeshore like this to a, an all year use, then you will be required to get a permit. Graham Bradley oversees the septic permitting process for the state. He says that for those systems that were grandfathered in, problems can occur. An improperly maintained septic system can discharge pathogens or nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen to groundwater and the lake. That's long been a problem here at Carmi, which was recently the first lake in Vermont to be declared a lake in crisis. 
And while aging septic systems are part of the problem, they're only one piece of the puzzle. We have to think of the number of uh, sources of phosphorus. There's um, surface water running over the land surface and bringing phosphorus from an excess of fertilizer or manure placed on the land, but there's also phosphorus coming through the groundwater from septic systems around the lake. Now it's fair to say that we know that the majority of uh, nutrients is coming across the surface, from surface, from different land uses, um, but here at Lake Kamai, we're coming to an understanding that we all need to do something to try and reduce that amount of phosphorus entering the lake. For those who do want to explore alternatives when the time comes to replace their septic, there are a number of options. This Advantec system is just one example. There's alternative innovative treatments that can be suited to almost any property. All homeowners should make informed decisions about uh, what to do when they're faced with a septic upgrade. Uh, things like how much space the system will take up, how much the system will cost to maintain. Uh, we talk about life cycle costs uh, a lot. And, uh, one system might be cheaper to install, but more expensive to operate. Besides Ferrar, a number of homeowners around Lake Carmi have upgraded to alternative systems. It may not be for everyone, but uh, it's a great system. Uh, it just has a, a very low impact on the environment. So if, if that's where you're trying to go, uh, I think it's a good system. It's an innovative technology that's helping these lakeside neighbors keep their waste where it belongs, in the septic tank. In Franklin, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Thank you, Rebecca. Joining me now are two guests from the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. They both work in DEC's regional office program. Graham Bradley is the program hydrogeologist and soil geologist, and Ernie Christensen is the program manager. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Graham, what's the state's role in managing septic systems? Okay, well, first, hello, Judy. And Hi. Thank you for inviting us today. Sure. So I see my role as the state, with the state as really making sure that Vermonters don't get sick. Mm -hmm. Our primarily, primary role within our program is to, main, is to protect the health of Vermonters. And as part of that, um, we also protect the environment. Um, both as a natural resource, a recreational resource, and a economic resource. Mm -hmm. And so mm. is one of the problems that people really don't think about their septic system unless something goes wrong? <laughs> That's true, yeah. yes. Um, one of the things we'd like to encourage today is to ensure that everybody knows who has a septic system, and most people in rural areas do, knows where their leach field is. Um, it's the leach field, many people just think of it as the way of getting dirty water into the ground, but mm -hmm. actually it's much more than that. Um, so as I said, most people in rural areas likely have a septic system and they hopefully know where their septic tank is and we all know what goes into that. Every time we flush the toilet mm -hmm. or we pull the plug out of the sink, that goes into the septic tank. And every few years, we know to get the solids pumped out of that. Then if you think about it, we actually put a lot more water down there than solids, and that water has to go somewhere. And now it's become contaminated with what's in the septic tank. So that is what goes to our leach field. Now, as I said, the, the way that is treated is that it enters the soil, that dry soil, that unsaturated soil below the wheat leach field. Mm -hmm. and the bugs, the microbes that live in that soil treat that wastewater for us. So they treat it before it gets down into the groundwater. And that's the key. That's the key. Because most people who have septic systems also have wells. Correct, yes. And so Ernie, what does a homeowner who might be putting in a new system or upgrading an existing one need to know or need to do? Well, the first would be to contact the designer. On our webpage, we have four different designers, there's a link to uh, four lists. And we have different classes. We have a class one, who are professional engineers who are soil, soil compliant. We have class A's, B's, and BW's. Mm -hmm. And each class can design certain types of systems. 
So the first would be to go to the web page and, and find a, a designer you're comfortable with. They are knowledgeable, they know the rules, they will help to cite the leach field, they will help prepare the application and prepare the plans that we need to complete our reviews and, and hopefully permit. Is there a ballpark figure you can give me about what it costs to replace your system? We don't because it's, there's such a wide variety of systems. Sure. You showed the Advantex with uh, Jared. Mm -hmm. That would be a very expensive system because there's pre-treatment followed by a bottomless sand filter. Mm -hmm. Uh, mound systems, we can range from fifteen dollars to $20,000, sometimes less depending upon where the sand is coming from. And then you have your conventional in-ground leach fields, which would be substantially less. Graham, is it only homeowners who are on the lakes or on waterways who have to think about the, the health of their septic system? No, it isn't. I'm wondering if I ask your viewers now where the nearest <coughs> Um, source of water is, what they would think of. I think many might think of the nearest stream or lake, but actually the nearest water resource to where we are now is right below our feet. And remember, that's where we're putting the wastewater into the ground. And, and so we have this, we share this common resource of the groundwater, and it's, it's all our responsibility to, to maintain that as a, as a healthy resource. As you pointed out, um, most homeowners in rural areas who have their own septic system also have their own well. And so it, it's important to, to keep that, to treat that water before it enters the groundwater, which goes to the well and goes to our local streams and lakes. Ernie, are, um, why are these issues so important here in Vermont? Vermont's economy is, is, is tourism or is based uh, a lot on tourism. Mm -hmm. And in 1969, October or September 18th of 1969, the state adopted its first set of rules to look at siting of leach fields. They were very rudimentary, just your basic soils, uh, isolation distances, there wasn't really any designs associated with them. And we've progressed up to 2007, the last major rewrite, where we incorporated that we would have jurisdiction over all lots because up until then, lots that were created before 1969, 1970 were considered exempt and just would go under town regulations if they had any. So that's the, the primary goal is to protect our, our surface waters, our ground waters, recognizing that wastewater is very fundamental to, to maintain our lakes, ponds, skiing and hiking all the, all the reasons that Vermont attracts tourists. Which brings us to another um, issue that homeowners should be aware of is it's really important to know what not to put down the drain. Correct. You know, mm -hmm. there's basically what I would say is if it, if it can be composted, please don't dump it down the drain. Yeah. I was out on a system once and we pulled the, the distribution box, which is after the septic tank, we found tomato slices, lettuce, well, they should not be getting through the septic tank. And if they're getting to the distribution box and they get out into the leach field, they will clog the soils. You don't want to put down excessive amounts of grease. Right. If you can get rid of the grease, put it, landfill it, that's appropriate. Paint, uh, there was a condominium project. The system failed very quickly, and they found white pigment that the engineer concluded was due to paint. So you really want to think about any, any activity that will kill the, what Graham calls the good bugs, mm -hmm. the bacteria in the septic tank, or may proceed out into the leach field and kill the, the aerobic bacteria that we're relying on. We're almost out of time anyway, so I think what oh. I'm going to do is, is <laughs> send people to your website because there's a lot of information there. It's septic.vt.gov. The website has information for all of the five regional offices around the state. You can find the office closest to you and get specific information about your own septic system. Again, that website is septic.vt.gov. I want to thank you both for coming in today and talking about this. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.